I couldn't really record anything on the way here because it's so windy today, but I've come to this place that I've come before. Uh, there's a pond back here and just coming in right here, I can already hear an abundance of small little birds. I don't have my camo on today, uh, but today's video is going to be about our new lens. So I just missed the yellow rumped warbler that landed behind me and I've spun around into the sun now, uh, but there should be enough like, coverage from these grass and stuff on either side of this little ditch with the stream going through it. Um, so hello from a rock that I'm laying on. Let me tell you about my lens. It is the Tokina 400mm f5.6 and I'm using it on my Sony A5000, which is an APS-C body, which means I have an equivalent of about a 600mm f8. There is a fly on my lens. Nature. He's just going to be in our shot. Eugene. Oh, he didn't like his name. So I have about a 600mm f8 lens, and I do really like that it has this built-in lens hood, uh, which is really helpful because being a vintage lens, this one has quite a bit of flare. So this lens I do believe was made in the 90s. Uh, this is apparently the last of the manual focus Tokina telephoto primes. Mine is for the Minolta MD mount and I have adapted it with a newer MD to NEX adapter. And so far it seems to be working perfectly. Uh, this is really only my second day with the lens. Um, so this is just going to be kind of a first look and impressions and see what kind of photos we can get. Hopefully we'll get a couple warblers. So I've come to a place with a lot less wind. Uh, the pond is actually just through a couple trees here behind me. Um, and there's a lot more birds here. I've already seen a lot of little ones just kind of through the branches and uh, I've got a couple photos just to try to see what they were. So I'll put one of those up here now. I have them about 30 feet, 10 meters away is what the lens says. Sorry, they're just all right flying like right in front of me. I picked this lens up on eBay and then ordered the adapter from Amazon. Um, I paid about $100 for the lens itself and another $15 for the adapter. The adapter is pretty good quality, uh, it's all metal and it seems pretty sturdy, no issues. Same with the lens, uh, no issues with the lens that I've found so far, everything seems to work really great. Uh, focusing is fairly stiff but pretty smooth and it works really well on my A5000 so far. Photos seem to be pretty sharp and it definitely gives me a lot more reach than the other lens that I was using. The lens that I had before this one was a thrift store find. I've talked about it before and... Eugene has followed us. I paid about, I can't remember if it was 10 or $15 for it. I picked up two of them. One of them was a 70 to 210. The other was an 80 to 205. The 70 to 210 just really wasn't sharp enough. So I've been using the 80 to 205, giving me a just over 300 millimeter reach on my APS-C body. And I really like the little birds, the warblers, juncos, finches, stuff like that, sparrows. So that just wasn't enough reach for me, uh, especially not just coming out for walks like this, where I would just try to find birds wherever I go. So I found something with a nice price to it and decided to jump on it. Um, again, I really don't mind the manual focus. I think it's just kind of part of the fun of it. And if I miss some photos, I miss some photos. I'm not a professional at this point and I'm honestly just having fun while I learn. So this lens is perfect. So the aperture ring on this lens goes from f5.6 to f22 and it is clicky. I don't know if you can hear that. It is clicky and there is half clicks between 8, 11, and 16, but not through between 5, 6, and 8, and 16 and 22. It's a little stiff, 
but not difficult to change and feels nice and smooth. Blindly fire while the birds fly past us, why don't we? We're gonna get something eventually, right? There is a yellow rumped warbler. He's just behind some branches though, so I can't get a photo of him. Oh, he went down on the ground. He's in the ferns, people. So one thing about this lens though is the minimum focusing distance. Uh, it's marked on the lens as 13 feet or four meters, which really isn't that close. Uh, you can throw on some extension tubes, which I might try in the near future. I've got some of those back in my bag. For now though, I've positioned myself in a good spot where there's a lot of natural perches just kind of like all over here. So all the birds are just kind of landing about and shuffling and doing their things. And I'm missing every photo because I'm just, I'm still learning. Though this lens is made completely out of metal and glass, obviously it's a lens, um, it's not that heavy. For a 400 millimeter, apparently this one's quite small. It's only about two and a half pounds and put on a small body like this, it's actually really easy to just throw on a strap and throw over my shoulder and bring, bring with me. And it's not that much heavier than the 80 to 205 zoom lens that I was using. I've been using the lens for the past few days now, and I've had a lot of fun messing around with it. 600mm isn't the easiest to find your subject in frame, but manual focusing is pretty quick and easy with the well damped focus ring. The lens also comes with built in lens collar for mounting on a tripod. This is also completely removable, which is better for hand holding. All the photos shown here were JPEG, straight out of camera. I primarily bought this lens for wildlife, with birds being my main focus right now. There is really nice subject separation and background blur, even with most of my shots being at f8. Being an older lens, Chromatic aberration can be a real problem, as well as a bit of softness when shooting wide open. Stopping down just one click helps both sharpness and fringing though, and I really like the final outcome of a lot of the photos I've taken with this lens so far. So this lens is perfect. 